Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Curl, I'd like to welcome everyone to the no November Warrior Information Exchange. Sir, at this time, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, hey, thank, thank you all very much for, for being here and for uh, um, participating. This is, this is one of the main ways we get information out. And uh, one of the, the main um, things that we get in terms of feedback from soldiers is we never know what's going on. Um, you know, it's always difficult to, to imagine because, you know, we've got the Facebook page, we've got the website and all that stuff. But I think for all of us, for leaders, um, we've got a lot of great stuff going on in this installation. We've got um, more programs than I've ever seen in an installation. Um, we've got movie nights, we've got, we've got uh, uh, fishing derbies, um, we've got, um, as well as, you know, working on road projects uh, in the neighborhoods, in the uh, throughout those in general, and, uh, and it's incumbent upon us to all get that information out. Do we have any CFRRs here? One. Okay, raise your hand if you're a commander. Okay. Every one of these, make sure you have a CFRR with you. Every one of these, make sure you have a CFRR with you because you're probably not going back and immediately pushing out uh, this information uh, to your formation. So make sure you have someone who is going out and pushing it out to formation. Because uh, you all get this information, but we need to make sure that this all gets to the, to the lowest level, uh, which is the, the, the critical thing here. Uh, because we need to make sure that everyone gets gets the, the, the great information that's pushed out here. So for all of you, for briefing, thank you. Uh, and thank you for all that you do. Um, the first thing that we'll talk about this morning is retention. Um, so um, we're going to award, uh, Sergeant Major and I are going to award um, a lot of great units that are doing a lot of great work uh, on retention. Um, and that's obviously critical to what we do because, you know, in the Air Force they got planes, in the Navy they got, they got ships, and in the Army we've got people. And uh, the Army's made of people, and, and, that's, and that's what we, that's, that's our, our livelihood, and that's our... Uh, that's 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 what makes us great. So, um, for all of you that are keeping the right people in the army and, uh, and keeping good soldiers in the army, uh, appreciate the, the work on that. So, without further ado, sir. Good morning. The Retention Awards program is designed to recognize units displaying excellence in their retention programs and superior achievement in attaining assigned objectives that support the goals of the Army Retention Program. The Commanding General's Retention Excellence Award recognizes the 509th Infantry Battalion, 15 Aviation Battalion, and 41st Transportation Company for achieving over 100% of their annual mission in the active and reserve component categories. Additionally, the Commanding General's Top Producer Award recognizes the unit with the highest overall percentage of mission accomplishment, achieving over 140% of their annual mission, JRTC Ops Group, is awarded the Top Producer Award. Will representatives for 509th, 15 Aviation, 41st Transportation Company, and Ops Group please join Brigadier General Curl and Command Sergeant Major Pena in presentation of the awards. Thank you. 
Hey, y'all come back up. Good morning. My name is Ryan Walker. I'm the G3. Uh, we'll be moving on to uh, calendar highlights for the next two months. Uh, as we look to tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, the Veterans Day ceremony over at the 1-5 Aviation Hangar. Again, that's at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, looking to Friday, uh, 6 p.m., wine and tapas uh, here in the Warrior Center Ballroom. This very room right here. Friday also kicks off the four-day Veterans Day holiday, which runs through um, Monday. Uh, on Sunday, uh, in this room or in this building here, 10 a.m. Second Sunday brunch. Uh, as we move on to the following Friday, the 15th at 10 a.m., Cops and Coffee at Dogwood Terrace, and at 7 p.m. on Headquarters Field is the next movie night. On to that same Saturday, uh, the 16th at 8 a.m., Turkey Trot Fun Run and Walk here at the Warrior Hills Golf Center or Golf Course, and then at 9 a.m., Cars and Coffee at the Auto Craft Center. Monday the 18th, uh, 4 p.m., Walking Town Hall uh, at Maple Terrace. Tuesday the 19th at 6 p.m., we have Volunteer of the Quarter for the fourth quarter uh, here in the Warrior Center. Moving on to the 21st, at 6.30 a.m. is the Boss Toy Ruck at Anvil Field. And then at 11 to 2 that day is the Thanksgiving meal for, uh, for Fort Johnson uh, over at the Patriot Warrior Restaurant. Again, that's 11 to 2 uh, a.m. to p.m. All right, moving on to Friday the 22nd at uh, 1030 a.m., the November and December uh, Installation Retirement Ceremony. We're going to combine those two months. Again, that's 1030 uh, a.m. right here in this room on the 22nd. Uh, and then at uh, noon, there's a newscomer's brief. And then at 430 p.m., right arm night. And then 530 p.m. is Friday Night Live here at the Warrior Center. Moving on to the following week uh, on the 26th uh, at 11 a.m., Fort Johnson Turkey Bowl at Anvil Field. That starts at 11 a.m. And then on to the 28th on Thanksgiving Day at 6 to 8 p.m. at the Home of Heroes. That's a Thanksgiving meal with the boss. Again, that's at the Home of Heroes. Uh, and that also, the 28th starts our Thanksgiving holiday uh, break. So coming back on in December, on the 4th is the December uh, Warrior Information Exchange. So this meeting right back in here. On to the Friday uh, at 5.30 p.m. The highlight is the uh, Snowflake Festival Parade and Tree Lighting Ceremony at the PX. The Tree Lighting Ceremony, that's a change. It was Saturday. It's now going to be on Friday. And moving into Saturday at 10 a.m., Cops and Coffee at Palmetto. And then 5.30 p.m., back at the PX parking lot is the continuation of the Snowflake Festival. On Sunday the 8th at 10 a.m., Second Sunday Brunch. And then Monday the 9th at 9 a.m. is the Quality of Life Conference right here in this room at the Warrior Center. And then 4 p.m. that afternoon is the Walking Town Hall of Palmetto. Let's move into Friday the 13th. Uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, at the ACS building is a naturalization and citizenship ceremony. And then Saturday the 14th, a lot of events, but 8 a.m. Ugly Sweater Fun Run at the Warrior Hills Golf Course. Uh, and then 6 p.m. Murder Mystery, again, Ugly Sweater at the Forge Pub. And then that day is also the Army Navy, uh, and that'll be showing that at the Anvil Bar for anyone who can make it out. On to uh, Friday the 20th. That starts the, uh, the 20th through the 5th uh, January, uh, starts the JRC and Fort Johnson block leave period. Um, and then uh, no real highlights other than the 28th, uh, 7 a.m. Still have a fishing tournament at Alligator Lake uh, during the Christmas break. So pending any questions? All right, I'd like to introduce your boss rep. Good morning. Hi, I'm from Boss. I'm going to go over some events that's happening this week. We have our Bible study on Thursday, the 7th. Um, this will be uh, starting at 1800. Uh, we, tr we will try to continue this until December, but we're going to try to encourage our single soldiers to actually use our chaplain services 
and um, doing these Bible studies. Um, on the 8th as well, we have our archery class. Um, this is going to be at the MWR shooting range, and then we'll have an outdoor movie night. If for some reason there are any um, weather conditions that will happen that kind of deters us from doing this movie outside, we will move to the Home of Heroes Rec Center. Then we also have another movie night. We just love movies. Um, it's gonna be on Saturday the 9th and we'll have this at 1800 at the Home of Heroes Rec Center and our building location is building 1455. Um, and then on Sunday we have our NFL watch party. It's also still gonna be at the Home of Heroes Rec Center. It will start at 1100. Depending on how many people are gonna be there, we will provide uh, food and drinks and also give them some activities to kind of uh, socialize with other soldiers. And then I want to kind of cover on what G3 has uh, emphasized, which is the holiday toy ruck march, which is on the 21st. Um, this will start at 6.30 and it, will, it should end around 800, uh, 800. And we would like our command teams uh, to be present, uh, use this as like a PT for your soldiers. This will kind of build camaraderie, but at the same time, you're welcome to dress up in any fest festival, holiday festival, attire that you want to have them participate in, as well as make sure that when you do have the rucks, you can create it with lights, have your music on there. And this should be a, a fun way to kind of bring the toys in so that we can help families who are not able to afford this, okay? And I will be followed by DFMWR. Good morning, how's everyone today? Yay, they're still awake. Um, so we have lots of things happening with MWR um, in the next couple of months. So on this screen, you see some of our programs that we have available to our soldiers and families here. So two big highlights that I want to highlight here. How many people knew that we had leisure travel here at Fort Johnson? Okay, we're about 50%. So today, now you do know, so everyone's hand should raise, you know that we have leisure travel here at Fort Johnson. That building is located over at Playtown and Cafe. They have some really awesome deals for Christmas time at Disneyland, at Disney World, and those kind of things. She also offers tickets to SeaWorld, Six Flags, all kinds of Christmas gifts for the kids, for family, those kind of things, and they are discounted. So check out those prices before you go to purchase them on your own. They can get you a really good deal. So over at Playtown and Cafe, you can check it out on the website and give them a call too if you have any questions. Um, Toledo Bend Rec Site. How many people have been to Toledo Bend Rec Site? Okay, a little more than that knew about leisure travel, so that's a good sign. So if you've never been out to Toledo Bend, it is a great place to go, especially during the summertime. But my favorite time to go to Toledo Bend is in the fall. It's a little bit cooler. Campfires are great. You can take the kids out for s'mores. This time of year, you can even still play in the water, really. You can get in the canoes. You can play in the beach and those kind of things. So definitely check that out if you have a little bit of spare time because I know we all have that to go out to Toledo Bend, rent a cabin, stay out there for the weekend, or even during the week of Thanksgiving. It's great. We have cabins, yurts, tent sites, and all kinds of things that you can rent and be entertained with out there. Next slide. So this slide's kind of busy. There are some flyers on your table, just like every annual event that we have, Turkey Bowl, Turkey Trot, you've heard about all of those. Two events that are not on this slide. If you have any questions on this slide, I'll be more than happy to answer them. There are a calendar for MWR events that you can check out. But two events that you see, the Snowflake Festival, G3 mentioned that, so that is gonna be the first Friday and Saturday of December. The big thing for units to take back is the plywood Christmas card. So it's a blue one right here at the bottom. We are offering the winner of the plywood Christmas card takes home $500 worth of unit funds. So this is a really easy way to boost morale in your companies or your units is to create these plywood Christmas cards, drop them off at the PX. They are unit representation. So I know, I believe 509th is in here. Yeah, I saw them earlier. So they won last year. I know, I see them down there, thumbs down. Um, so this is a great way to represent your unit. Um, any other organizations, so the chapel, MWR, we have CYS that does them. Um, last year we had about 28 cards, so we're looking to pack the PX with at least 40 or more this year. So definitely incorporate your units into this. You can drop them off, it's easy. We are actually even providing the plywood for units. You just have to come pick it up from our warehouse. So if you need plywood, scan this QR code. It tells you when you can get it, how you can get it, and everything. All you have to do is paint it and drop it off at the PX. So good things coming, $500 of unit funds. And then something you don't see on this slide is our uh, two versus two golf tournament. This 
weekend. It is a Veterans Day tournament. Um, Friday is the social, and then the Saturday and Sunday are the actual tournament. We will be placing, so if you're not a golfer, we have lots of golfers that are playing in this tournament, and so we'll place you with someone that can play golf. So either you can learn or you can do better, or you can just come out and have a really great time. So this is this weekend. Um, encourage everyone to come out and play a round of golf. Do we have any questions? Awesome. I'll be followed by CYS. Hi, good morning. Tiffany Cook. School liaison officer. Again, um, our office provides this information to all of our families that are incoming, so that is why we also brief you guys at the week. So, a few things that are coming up, um, no school on Monday, and then also, of course, the Thanksgiving um, holidays are coming up as well. Youth sports is pretty busy right now. You'll see uh, lots of different sports seasons are kicking off and have registrations going on. There is a flyer on all of your tables that show those dates. So if you want, you can take a picture of it. It'll also be posted um, on the Facebook, the MWR Facebook, as well as the CYS Fort Johnson Facebook and on the website. The volleyball clinic is still has space available and that is just a one-time $25 fee. And then your child can participate in the remaining clinics that are listed there on that slide. Of course, You'll see a slide a little bit later from RMO that has a child and youth program associate position available. That is an ongoing um, vacancy that's always out there. So if you know somebody that's interested in working with children and having a 50% off their childcare, um, have them please look into that. If they have questions, they can reach out to us or um, CPAC. And then also our FCC providers. So again, that is child care in someone's home. We help them set everything up and we train them and then they receive subsidies and reimbursements and direct care payments from their family. So if that's something that someone is interested in, that's the point of contact number there. Any questions? One other thing that's not on the slide is we do have, or two other things, we have the parent advisory board meeting tonight at 1630, that is at building 924, which is where you register for all things CYS. And then on Friday, we will be closed for staff training. The schools and parents have been notified, but just putting it out here one more time. All right, thank you. I will be followed by ACS. <laughs> Good morning. Um, Closing out the, uh, the end of the year is always a good time to look at your finances and your budgeting, your financial plans, and so I'd like to concentrate a, little, a few minutes on that. Uh, on some of the packets, you'll see the continuation pay message, the one that's uh, currently out for 2025. We have a challenge educating all the blended retirement system personnel about continuation pay and ensuring that they, they in fact, uh, take advantage of that if they're so inclined. As of now, up through 2000. 25, it should be two and a half times their base pay for a four year commitment. Is it a financial commitment? Again, if they're in the blended retirement system at between eight years and 12 years, they're eligible for continuation pay. Additionally, we're uh, starting the second, second opportunity to look into the, uh, the uh, DCFSA. So on your package, you'll see uh, uh, dependent care financial or uh, I'm sorry, flex spending account. Uh, that's a great mechanism for uh, dual or two working parents to offset their taxes. Any information, please come see us at ACS Financial Readiness. We'll be glad to, uh, to incorporate that into your financial plan. Uh, open season starts on November 11th and it closes on December 9th uh, for the 2025 calendar year. On your uh, tables as well, you'll see a holiday spending plan, um, a, a good way to, to budget. We're, we're starting at the beginning of November, so looking through November, December, throughout the holiday season. Uh, plan your gifts and your trips and your dinners and of course review your taxes. Now is a great time to look at your 2024 taxes once we get into 2025 it's hard to change things from this year. We also included uh, the food and financial assistance uh, on, your, on your tables. This is what we hand out to the soldiers to let them know what uh, food and financial assistance are available in Vernon County and in Beauregard County. And uh, two additional things I'd like to point out is the SCRA. A lot of soldiers don't take advantage of the SCRA guidelines in Louisiana, which reduces interest rates to 6% or less, uh, regardless of when they acquire the loan. So that's a huge financial benefit. 
in addition to the ridiculous co cost of uh, car insurance here in Louisiana, uh, the Louisiana State Insurance has authorized a 25% discount to all active serving uh, service members in Louisiana. But the active duty service member has to submit that uh, a request to their insurance company uh, every six months or every time they renew their insurance. Pending any questions? Yes, sir. So in Louisiana and Ohio, uh, the states have extended the SCRA benefits to all active serving members inside the state. So if they're stationed here in Louisiana, Shreveport, New Orleans, Alexandria, uh, they, they'll also get the 6% or less. Even if they went out and got a car loan yesterday at 12%, um, they can, in fact, uh, reduce their interest rates all the way down. We've had some really good success with that because they pay back uh, any interest rate above that 6% from the entire time they've had the loan. So in a lot of cases, they've gotten money back or paid off debts. Thank you, sir. I'm followed by Ms. Barbara Bates. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Barbara Bates. I'm the relocation program manager over at ACS. So I just want to talk to you uh, really quick about the spouse to spouse. It's a sponsorship training for spouses who are interested in sponsoring other spouses that are coming here to Fort Johnson. So we do have a class coming up on December 3rd uh, for that training itself. I do ask that you call to schedule just so I know how many people to um, expect and how many to uh, prepare for. So I do ask uh, for that consideration. The phone number at the bottom is the 7087 and the flyers are on the tables. Um, but you can also call uh, 6941, which is my direct number, um, to register for the classes as well. The Hearts Apart um, is there, and it is not, Hearts, Hearts Apart is designed to actually help spouses of deployed service members to um, build relationships with other spouses going through the same situation. It is a, it is a type of uh, support group. We do offer crafting and things for them to do. Um, so that kind of helps open up that um, communication. So we do ask, um, again, I just need to know how many people are coming just so I know how to prepare, but I do ask for uh, reservations for that as well. We do not have childcare for that, unfortunately, so. Um, so there's also the uh, immigration services. Uh, he had mentioned it on the calendar for December 13th. That is by invitation only. I will also um, encourage any command group that has a service member that is going to be doing an interview uh, this month. Please make sure that they are able to attend that interview so that they can actually get the citizenship certificate on the 13th of December. Um, it is a big deal and um, it is a high priority, so I do ask for that consideration for those time frames. Um, the prep class is a uh, actually done by a family advocacy program and that class is there to help um, couples uh, get better communi uh, communicate efficiently work as a team and solve problems and managing conflicts so it's a really good opportunity for uh, couples to come in and actually be able to sit down and learn how to communicate I know unfortunately sometimes that takes a little bit of time but uh, we want to make sure we're helping that process out as much as possible so those classes are offered to those um, couples and and might need it. Um, really quick as well as I would like to add, I do also have um, flyers for the CONUS OCONUS um, classes that are scheduled for 2025. If you could please um, hand those to uh, anyone that's maybe in your S1s. Um, the OCONUS classes are mandatory and I do uh, ask that people come to these classes a minimum of 90 days prior to actually PCSing out of Fort Johnson um, because it does give them a head heads up of what to expect for that uh, future uh, expectation of where they're going. So does anybody have any questions? All right, I am followed by DHR. Good morning, I'm Mark Anderson. I'm the chief of uh, the Military Personnel Services Division. So, just to start the uh, summer surge process a little bit earlier, um, we start our summer surge with orders that starts for us in about January, trying to make sure soldiers have their orders. Army's goal is 120 days out from their report date. Um, so for us, what's working is the IPSA is fantastic, um, or it's getting there, right? Um, 
we're <laughs> we're having some steps to get through, um, but there is a constant change in it, um, and we're evolving to try to meet those changes. So, our largest uh, our largest uh, feat in accomplishing is the communication through the unit, the soldier, and the MPD. So when we need something to complete that assignment um, in IPSA to create that order, we send that request back to the unit and the soldier through IPSA um, because that's our, that's our main communication piece. So when we request that information, um, the faster we get that information back, the faster we can create that order. Um, so some things that we've done um, to help with this PCS process, we now do an in-person levy brief. We started it uh, this last year in 2024. We continue that through 2025. That list of those dates is sent out to G1 and uh, uh, your unit S1s. Um, but there are some things that don't always get in orders, so we create addendums uh, for those. Um, it's just an additional piece of paper the soldiers got to have with their orders. Um, so some assistance that we could use from units is if your soldier is 120 days out from their report date um, and they don't have their orders, please let us know. Um, my contact information is the bottom of this slide. Um, the faster we know the problem, um, the faster we can get that information back from the soldier of the unit, the faster they get the orders, they can get their transportation appointment, EFMP processing, all that stuff has to happen bef you know, with orders. So pending any questions. I will be followed by the RSO. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Krista Gross. I get to serve at your Fort Johnson Religious Support Office with the best religious support team this side of the Mississippi River. Um, and so today I want to invite you, first of all, before we do anything else, to come to the chapel, um, also known as the Religious Support Office. We are often there seven days a week, um, tending to the families that we get to care for here on our installation. Um, and so we would invite you. Normally when I come up here, I talk to you about religious education programming and the things that we're doing in the in-between time at the chapel. Today I want to highlight some of our amazing worship communities um, so that you are aware what is available to you and to the people that you're caring for. So the first one is our Islamic um, Juma prayer that we hold um, as a form of worship weekly on Fridays at Glory Chapel at 2.30. This is available to any Muslim soldiers that are here on Fort Johnson and or their dependents. Um, it is um, lovingly cared for by a great uh, volunteer lay leader um, who comes every Friday into our installation to lead prayer. So that is available every week with the exception of training holidays. You heard me say it's volunteer led. Um, and so we try to be respectful of his time. Um, this month it is happening on the 15th of November and the 22nd of November. Again, at Glory Chapel at 1430. Also, we have Catholic Mass every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, and recently we have added in um, weekly Mass during the day. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 1145, you can come to Main Post Chapel and participate in daily Mass, and you can also go to BJAC on the fifth floor to their chapel on Thursdays at noon to participate in Mass. Um, the next one over you see in the middle is a little grid. Um, that is our Unity Fellowship Protestant Service calendar for the month of November. There are a lot of things that are on that calendar. That community is doing something together to connect almost every single day of the week. Um, and so we would invite you to check that out. Their worship service meets Sunday morning at 11 a.m. at Main Post Chapel. And you can see during the course of every week, there is something for you and your families and or the people that you are serving to participate in. Um, if you move on to the right, um, hanging of the greens is something that a lot of people like to participate in. And that is when we very simply usher in the Christmas season at the chapel. Um, and that will happen on November 24th at noon. We'll start with some lunch. We'll have some chili and maybe some gumbo. And then we will work together as a community to 
put up the greens in the chapel for the Christmas season. A worship community that you do not see on the slide because they have already had their worship for the month is our thriving pagan community that currently meets at the Grove at Main Post Chapel. Um, during the month of December. Just reminding everyone that the audio care line, that's for your prescription refills, that phone number changed as of the 1st of November to 337-386-1386. And if you didn't know this, you can also request prescription refills through the MHS Genesis patient portal, and the QR code for that is there. And just for all things pharmacy, sometimes you don't have time to wait at the outpatient pharmacy, and you can always pick up your prescriptions, whether they're a new prescription, or a refill at the Script Center 24-7, 365 days a year, right inside entrance A, which is the level the DFAC is on uh, for those who are unfamiliar with entrance A. Now let me rise up to the top of this. It is going to be open season for TRICARE starting Monday. I have brought two lovely ladies, Miss Sabrina and Miss Vanessa here from our managed care section. They will be here afterwards if you have additional questions. But who does this apply to? If you're wearing a green uniform, it does not apply to you. But it does apply to your family members. And basically what it means is if you're on Prime and want to switch to Select, you can. If you're on Select and you want to come switch back to Prime, you can also do that. In addition to the open season, I want to make sure sure everyone understands that five states this side of the Mississippi are now going to be under Tri-West. So we will no longer be in the eastern region with Humana, we will be in the western region with Tri-West. If you are a retiree on Tri-Care for Life, you don't need to worry about this. But if you're a, tri if you're a retiree on Prime, you'll want to make sure that you get with Tri-West before the 1st of June if your payments for your uh, health insurance is not coming out automatically as an allotment. All right, so that's the big thing really for retirees. If you pay annually outside of your allotment, you're gonna need to get with TriWest. Um, but like I said, I brought the experts with me, and if you follow the BJAC page, I'll have a lot of information coming out about this over the next two weeks. And if you're in the hospital the next two weeks until the 10th of December, sorry, that's like two months, or a whole month, it'll be all just Try care open season stuff in the elevators. So if you forget any of this and you're in the hospital, look in the elevators and you'll see some information on that. Pending any questions, I'll be followed by LRC. Hi, I'm Heather Waldrop, the personal property movement manager here at Fort Johnson. We have a lot of stuff going on starting in December. We are phasing in the global household goods contract to December. An estimated 20% of DOD-wide shipments will be moved via GHC during that initial phase-in month for us. It's been phased in since April at other installations. Uh, it'll increase up to an estimated 100% domestic by peak season 2025. So you all can be looking forward to that. International shipments will phase in post-peak season 2025 and into 2026. The contractor that will be providing the service is HomeSafe Alliance. I urge everybody, once orders are received, to visit the transportation office so we can figure out if you are going to move via GHC or the Legacy System DPS. There is a sort tool on the DPS landing page that will direct you to the correct system. The GHC is focused on improving quality of life for the service members and their families with enhanced communication support. You'll have a single move manager throughout your entire move. There's two new information technology systems. Mill move is where you're going to set up your shipment. HomeSafe Connect is going to be your shipment management page where you will look at your in transit information there will be a spot where you'll have pictures of your packing crew, your delivery crew, your electronic inventory will be included on that page. Uh, there's more streamlined services for filing and settling claims. Again, you'll have an electronic inventory with photos. In instances of late pickups or missed delivery dates, you can work directly with HomeSafe for a more streamlined inconvenience claims process with comp compensation. Um, just a little tidbit here, the Army has already had 44 task orders under GHC, 31 pickups, 29 deliveries of those 44 task orders, 97.8 satisfaction rate, 
and a 6.3% claim submitted rate. Pending any questions? None? All right, I'll be followed by AFIS. Good morning, everybody. So as always, I bring you what's coming up with the exchange uh, promotional wise. Also to remind everybody that the new star card should be arriving to all of you that have the old star card. And, and again, don't freak out when you see something that says discover, it's because we're using that network to provide you better security and privacy on your card. You can do your tap pay and everything going on. Um, the other event that I wanna highlight is uh, on, the, on November 11th at nine o'clock in the morning in front of the main store, we will be honoring our veterans. Uh, we have, every year we get the, com uh, the little coin, so we have limited quantities gonna be, but I think we have about 100 coins that we will be handing out in the morning. We'll have some coffee and some cupcakes just to honor those who serve. Uh, pending any questions, that's all I have. I did bring some uh, flyers for the November 11th uh, sale because that's kind of like the new Black Friday. Black Friday is kind of like a thing of the past now. So, and I left you some flyers around so that you guys can start seeing that. Pending any questions, that's all I have. I'll be followed by Dick Kimmett. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, all. How y'all doing? Hey, on behalf of my director, Mark Leslie, and myself, I'd like to welcome you this morning. Uh, while campfires may be fun, they are still not authorized at this time. Thank you, Ms. Garmy. Um, there is still an installation burn ban, and the parishes still have the burn bans in effect. So uh, we'll keep you apprised on any changes that may occur. Although the training areas are back to amber, which is very good for the uh, for training here. Um, Remember, travel season is coming up qu rather quickly. Make sure you check the weather, stay informed, uh, and stay uh, or sign up for Nixle alerts. That's different than the alerts you're going to find for the military on your computers. That's the method the WAC uses to communicate. Nixle is the method that the parishes and counties throughout the United States use to communicate to their residents. Um, yeah, and in keeping with the weather and uh, public service announcements, a uh, giant voice test will be conducted on 12 November, uh, just to make sure that everything's operational and to keep you informed. And uh, lastly, not on the slide, but I, I will let you know that uh, 18th Weather Squadron in the walk is staying apprised to, uh, or in contact with the Lake Charles Weather Service, uh, looking at the weather that's in the tropics right now. Uh, they did make a last minute change right before we came over here and they're showing they're indicating now that the, the weather that's in the Gulf will likely remain in the Gulf and head off towards uh, Mexico and not likely to impact us here but we are keeping our finger on the pulse and we we'll keep you informed with uh, with alerts uh, uh, social media and things of this nature so pending any questions I will be followed by RMO Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy Box from the Resource Management Office. I'm here to brief you on a few open vacancies and positions we have available in INCOM. If you look at your slides, you'll see. Main things I wanna make sure that you understand is please look at the open and closing dates. Those are the timelines that you had to apply for the position before it actually closes. The first, first one we have is our appropriated fund vacancies, as you see. The next one will be our non-appropriate vacancies that we have available. And if anybody would like to apply for these jobs, I wanna make sure you do understand that they are open and they do close. Make sure you take time to read the uh, PD, read the job due description and see if you qualify for it. If you have any questions on how to navigate USA jobs or want to have understanding of the PD or anything else. My information is on the very bottom of this page, email and phone, and I don't matter who it is, spouse, friend, whatever, please contact us at the resource management office so we can turn around and assist you with USA jobs or anything else. The bottom slide we have is upcoming vacancies. These are vacancies that are 
pending to be posted on USA Jobs very soon. So if you know anybody would like to apply for these jobs, we would love to have you. We'd love to have you join our team or have them join our team. Have them please apply, and we would uh, love to would love to welcome here to Fort Johnson. Pending any questions? Yes, sir. Not a question, but I want to ask them real quick. As you look at the slide, police officers, firefighters, dispatchers, and security guards now have a direct hire authority, which means if you know somebody in the community that does security work, firefighter, qualified, dispatcher, send me their resume and their name, we may be able to hire them like that without competition. Okay, so if, you, if you're out in the community, you run into somebody, get a, got a soldier, get down to the service or whatever, case may be, we can go direct the threat with those folks and bring them onto our team. So please spread that word for us. As you're out in the community talking to people, let us know. Or I've, I've said this before here, but we're the highest paid employer in the area. Local police officers are making $33,000 a year. We're starting them at 52. Okay, so help, help them. Help an individual out, bring them on board, and we'll pay them part of the team. Thank you. Yes, sir. We also do travel to a lot of locations, Shreveport, high schools, uh, a lot of their uh, career days and field days. We also go to a lot of events, hiring events throughout the state to help represent and put the information out that we do hire here on Fort Johnson and we are very, very competitive. And it is true that as you see the police officers and security guards, those are our critical positions and uh, we can do direct hiring and we would love to fill them if we could pending any questions. I will be followed by Corvius. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lisa Chandler. I'm the resident manager at Maple Terrace. I've just been asked to brief you guys on a couple things. Uh, first, we do have road construction that continues on Riverton Road and Maple Terrace. We do apologize for the inconvenience that's kind of been brought up with that. We did uh, get with our contractors. Um, rerouting all that kind of stuff working on a new plan um, they are working with an asset management team and are expected to be completed with that by the end of the year there are maps on the tables of the roads that have been completed and then also roads that are being worked on in the process the next slide and the next slide so then also the playgrounds we have four uh, of the replacements for the new playgrounds that have been put in the new playgrounds are located at Palmetto Community Clubhouse, another one on Maple, uh, Michael Drive in Palmetto, one on Homeland Street in Dogwood, and then Pendleton Drive in Maple Terrace. Also wanted to take a minute just to talk about our ESPC program that includes the new geothermal HVAC units and the hot water uh, heater upgrades. Please make sure that if you feel like your system is not working properly, if you have already had one installed or if one of your soldiers has had one installed, if it's not working properly, please have them contact us so we can put in a work order and get out there and work on it immediately. There have been a couple issues that have come up, but we've been able to identify them through the emergency work order, so we ask that you please do that and so we can address it immediately. We also ask that no one works on them themselves or try to remove any parts. There is some um, obvious danger and safety issues with that. So we do appreciate any, everyone's assistance with that. And lastly, just want to remind everyone of the resident referral program. If you are a current resident with us and refer a new resident to us, we do have a $500 incentive for that. Pending any questions, sir? Um, foot stop, uh, make sure that gets out to everyone, $500 referral. Mm -hmm. Getting anyone to, to, to move into Corvius, make sure, make sure everyone in Corvius knows that. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of caveat on that, we've had new residents come in from other installations and they said that those housing authorities also state that they have them and they never really pay them out. I promise we actually pay those out. I do those checks quite often, so please encourage everyone to do that. It's a nice feature. So pending any questions, I'm followed by DES. Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Darren Gotra. I work in the uh, physical security office. Uh, if you see the slide, Weapons registration is a big thing here on Fort Polk. All personnel residing on Fort Johnson, excuse me, I correct myself, I said Fort Polk, I apologize. Old habits are hard to break. All right, all residents that reside on Fort Polk uh, are required to register their weapons. <laughs> Did it again. <laughs> Boss, I apologize. All right, all right. Whether you're a soldier or a resident, because we have DODs, uh, on the post. A uh, copy of the registration must be kept with the weapon. All right. They can be produced uh, either at the VCC, the PX. We have it online on our Fort Johnson page. 
and on our physical security page. Uh, the main caveat is to make sure that how to transport the weapons on post. All right, you're supposed to take the direct route if you're a hunter to your location, whether you're doing hunting, whether you're going to the range, uh, or any of the activities on post. Carrying of concealed weapons on the installation is prohibited, whether you have a permit or not. Okay, so they're not allowed to, to be on post. Concealed carry. Pending any questions, I'll be followed by installation safety. Go to the next slide, Aaron. Keep going. One I'll, more. I'll take it. Go back one slide real quick. Just wanted to, since Mr. Rico's not here, I think he's in close right now. But uh, starting this month, one lane of Georgia will be closed down. So that will impact traffic uh, in the south incumbent area. So just keep that in mind. Texas is now open. It's a brand new road. It's nice and smooth. There's no speed bumps or bumps. Uh, so if you have a low or be cautious that Georgia will be one lane only starting later this month uh, until an undetermined time until we fix that road and make it more, uh, more better. Two slides, Ms. Kayla. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kayla Moore, Chief of the Plans Analysis and Integration Office, and I want to invite you all to our next Quality of Life Conference, which will be 9 December from 10 o'clock to 15.30. I have several flyers on you guys' table. There's a QR code on there. You can scan it in order to RSVP. This conference is a biannual conference that we offer here at Fort Johnson. It's open to all service members, family members, civilians, and retirees all ranks and we really want a representation from all demographics. It will be held right here in this ball center. Last conference we had, it was packed. We had over 100 people in here. It's an opportunity to have your voice heard on ways to improve Fort Johnson and the quality of life here at JRTC in Fort Johnson. Some of the topics that we're going to cover this one are spouse employment, health care, support and resilience, financial readiness, and PCS moves to so several of the topics that were discussed today in the we will be expanded on in the conference, right? And you'll be able to um, communicate with people at your tables on things that we need to add here at Fort Johnson. Again, please scan the QR code and RSVP by 25 November. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Earl East with the Garrison Commander's Office. I just wanted to go over real quick a couple um, parking policies changed at Woodville Hall. Um, in the past, in the we had visitors parking and we had re reserved spots for um, reasonable accommodations. We have now opened that up to first come first serve parking. All handicapped spots are available for first come first serve. The only things that are reserved is for commanders, sergeant majors, and directors along the curbs, as you can see. So if you come in and you see a name on the curb or an office name on the curb, that is reserved for those uh, individuals. Um, but everything else would be first come first serve subject to any question. Thank you. All right, we'll open it up to all the MSCs. Any questions, concerns, alibis? All right, nothing heard from the group. Next slide. Colonel Wilma, ma'am. Yes, sir.
feel free to continue to use both my <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jernigan. Uh, and then to put a finer point on what Ms. Gaylor talked about with regard to the quality of life, we just had a pretty successful AFAP, Army Family Action Plan meeting, uh, conference, I should say, within the last 10 business days. Thank you, MSDs, for sending your deputies, your delegates uh, to enrich that process. Please do the same thing for the 9th December Quality of Life Conference. And that's all from Garrison. Sorry, Major. Hey, uh, for everybody, for all the chain of command, chains of command, please uh, look within your formation, see who, who uh, which one of your soldiers are, are um, having to do the interview for their naturalization, and make sure they make that appointment. It's important uh, for them and their and their family. And then the second thing, uh, as uh, GHR mentioned about IPSA sponsorship, okay, we're one of the worst uh, installations on sponsorship, right? How do we welcome our soldiers? It's, it's not just a reception immigration uh, company over here with Captain Jose and First Arm War, but it is every chain of command and leader within your formation to welcome your soldiers and their families and make sure that sponsorship is uh, at the top of your list of priority um, because it's important for our soldiers and our families. And then that's how we get more people to move into Corvius where they're not venturing out and trying to find something cheaper outside because they think that their money is going to get them something better off the installation. So please help us out with sponsorship and help us out with the naturalization uh, interviews. Uh, it's important. Send your questions. And over to you. Sir? Okay. Hey, really appreciate it and uh, great information. So make sure, you know, kind of put stop on a couple of things. The uh, SCRA. Great, great information. Make sure everyone gets that. Six percent. Six percent for all active duty uh, debt, regardless of when they acquired new debt. Awesome. Good. Um, the uh, the five hundred dollar um, referral uh, for for Corvius. Uh, make sure everyone's tracking that, as well as uh, you know, how to register firearms and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. As the garrison commander said, great work on the ASAP. That was actually. It was one of those briefs that you go to and it's like, wow, that was actually way better than I thought it was going to be. Um, and it, it was a great work that, that your team did, so uh, that your representatives did. So make sure you send the same quality people to the uh, quality of life because things like that are really make, if they're the right people and they, uh, and they, they approach it the right way, it really make a huge difference. So um, really appreciate that. So without further ado, um, we've got the, Civilian and the soldier of the, the month. You want to go first, Sonny? Yeah, hey, so uh, most of you don't, a lot of things happen behind the scenes uh, when it comes to these events and when it comes to uh, the, the various uh, retirement ceremonies and whatnot. And so within the headquarters uh, team, we have a protocol team, right? And a lot of those, a lot of, we have civilian employees, DOD civilian employees, and, and they are the continuity for the, uh, for, for the protocol team. but. Amongst that team, we have some BMM, right? And we have a young man, Rathburn, please come up here. So PFC Rathburn is a borrowed military manpower, right? And, uh, you know, the CG and I, we, we always travel uh, through the headquarters before PT and after PT and whatnot. And this young man right here, PFC Rathburn, you know, he, no matter what the task is, he takes it head on. He's a young soldier, a young man, uh, and he does a lot more than some of our leaders in our formations do. He takes a discipline initiative to do things that aren't even in his, in, in, you know, in, in, in his uh, uh, scope of, of influence. And uh, he does a great job, and because of that, it's, he is this, the uh, soldier of the month for, for, uh, for this month, and we truly appreciate you. Unfortunately, we will be losing Rathburn here shortly. Uh, I know Miss Paula is going to be very, very upset uh, with that, and I think the entire protocol team is too, right? But uh, thank you for what you do. Thank you for always working behind the scenes. You don't do it for any praise or any accolades, and, and that's what makes that's what sets you apart from everybody else. So thank you for everything, right there.
So, uh, management pro program analyst for uh, DPW. The DPW, you know, they do all the the uh, the work on all our facilities uh, across the installation and, and across the Army. They're typically, you know, under resourced, uh, under underfunded, and uh, and do great work um, despite all of that uh, across the across the Army and across and especially across uh, Fort Johnson. So, um, but a lot of that. Uh, most of that is because of uh, the great work, the great initiative of, of uh, Stephanie Smith here. So um, we couldn't do what we do without the facilities that we have and you know, barracks and um, offices and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we really appreciate the, the work and the initiative that, that you've done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any additional comments, sir? No, thank you. Make sure, uh, make sure we get all this the word out. All right. I'd like to thank everyone for attending the, the uh, WE today. Our next iteration will be on 4 December at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Have a great day.